presentation. Uh, my presentation topic is uh, LMT field shapes and the uh, bumping challenge. Uh, we know that the mid uh, IMOs uh, uh, international conventions on emission reductions, uh, shaping is one development uh, of shaping industry using LNG as a field. Okay. Now, uh, let's see what's the latest status. Uh, before I go for this technical presentation, I uh, would like to show you very quickly this few slides uh, talking about this is, uh, our department, uh, then move on this uh, technical presentation. Uh, we come to universities in Strike Light. Uh, currently, we were established uh, in 1796, and currently, there are uh, 22,000 full time students on the campus. Uh, this engineering faculty in the university is uh, one of the top 10 university uh, engineering faculties uh, in the UK. In the university, we have uh, eight departments, oh, sorry, four. Engineering fa four faculties, and uh, in engineering faculty there are eight departments. We are one of these eight departments in engineering faculty. The department has uh, over 136 years of history, and the first the World of Architecture Chair was established in this department. Uh, currently, we are the top university, uh, marine engineering university. Maritime, you know, these uh, institutions in UK and uh, also leading institutions in Europe. Uh, we have uh, 27 member staff, including eight professors, uh, seven, seven senior staff, and uh, uh, 12 lecturers. In terms of students, we have undergraduate 350 now, 73 MSc students. And also that including four to nine students from here uh, currently, okay. And also PhDs, uh, is number is very dynamic. Uh, it's over 140s. Okay. So from the number of PhD, you can see we are very research dynamic, uh, strong department there. Students come from all over the world, from uh, over 40 different uh, countries. Um, we have uh, three undergraduate program, that's the Nova Architecture Marine Engineering, uh, Nova Architecture with Ocean Engineering, and then Nova Architecture with the High Performance Marine Vehicles. Uh, we have uh, nine MSc programs. There are eight traditional MSc programs, which is a 12 months MSc program, and also the last one is a uh, uh, 24 months program, which is jointly uh, delivered by Strathclyde University and Mr. Hamburg University. In the department, we have a, a, our research covers you know, a variety of topic in marine technology, and we uh, kind of grouped into three groups. The first one is the marine design operation and the safety group, where the marine engineer lies in. The second one is the fluid uh, structure interaction groups, talking about these hydrodynamics shapes uh, and the propulsion. Uh, there's third one is the ocean engineering groups, talk about this, uh, uh, structures and oil form platform, uh, subsea engineering system, and also including this uh, offshore renewable energy. That's very quick, you know, uh, going through about introduction to the department. Uh, after lunch today, uh, uh, myself and my colleague, uh, Alex Kahun, uh, we come here, also have another uh, purpose, try to talk to the student here. We give a presentation to Tahani students already, yesterday, try to recruit some students to join us for MSc study. And uh, I understand there's some other university students uh, sitting here today. So after lunch, myself and my colleague will be sitting in the uh, next room, that's conference room. Uh, if you have any questions you'd like to ask us uh, for anything, uh, we'll be happy to see you there. Okay. Now, quickly move on to this uh, technical topic. Uh, these two pictures shows you where we are now in terms of uh, emissions compared with the land-based emission. You can see uh, years ago, 20, 30 years ago, we were much better with the blue light, the marine emissions for logs, 
thought, uh, that the slide based emissions, they were very better uh, 20, 30 years ago. Now, the slide based emissions is catch up with the uh, marine shipping emissions for both NOx and SOx in yeah, quite a similar trend. Okay? Uh, that's why IMO has a very stringent emission regulations nowadays for both SOx and NOx. Uh, let's have a look at where they are. Mm -hmm. That's for NOx emission. Okay? Start from uh, 2000. Uh, and then 11, that's tier one. Uh, 11 years after that, tier two. Now we are talking about the tier three in this uh, uh, emission control area. Okay? To meet the tier three, uh, this commission technology uh, parameter tuning of engine operation is not sufficient. You have to install uh, uh, some specific technologies for this uh, emission control, like uh, SCR systems. This is a SOX emission uh, regulations. You may have seen this many times before. So uh, by you know the first of January next year, this uh, 2020s, these regulations will be enforced. Okay. So ships in open sea has to use 0.5 sulfur concentrated fuel, and the current is 3.5. The difference between these two type of fuel is uh, something like uh, 170 US dollars per tons. Okay. So by changing the fuel from a high sulfur fuel to low sulfur fuel, you are talking about uh, uh, this extra fuel cost for ships, uh, something like 10,000 US dollars per day. So, uh, so super operators have choice, either to use this low sulfur fuel or to use uh, an exhaust treatment system to achieve the equivalent emission levels as using low sulfur fuel. So let's see the super operators. Uh, Options and before that, let's have quickly review this where uh, this uh, secret area. So that's American. You can see both west and east the coast of American. Uh, they are in the sea area. Uh, uh, the English Channel, North Sea, and the Baltic Sea. They are uh, they were the first three regions became into this Ica um, uh, area, and then these other regions they will be soon joined this Ica uh, uh, area soon. So and you see that village become the UK area last year. Now this is the, to comply with this uh, NOx, SOx emission regulations, uh, shape operations uh, options now. First, you continue to use this uh, cheap heavy fuel oil, but in other options, you have to use uh, uh, a scrubber to meet this uh, uh, SOx emission control. Scrubber is able to remove this uh, uh, SOx in the exhaust. Okay because this is high sulfur concentration, plus SCR for NOx emission control, which means an engine has to be installed two systems. One is this, uh, SCR for NOx, and then after that, you have to have a, uh, a scrubber. So the system's uh, very funky. You can see it from here. That's one of this uh, water scrubber system. Uh, there's no space available in the engine room. If you do not use this option one, you have to use this uh, uh, low sulfur, low sulfur fuel, MTO. Uh, when you use a low sulfur fuel, there's no need for water scrubber. However, this uh, OX emission is still there. You have to use this uh, SCR when you're operating in the ECA area. And the third option is uh, to use an LNG. Okay? So once you use LNG, there's no need for scrubber, no need for SCR to meet the current uh, emission regulation regulations. Uh, I have presented this price already, the difference uh, between this uh, uh, heavy fuel oil and then this uh, MTO is something like uh, 170 US dollars per ton. Uh, this slide shows you this uh, emission levels of uh, LNG compared with the liquid fuel. Uh, the first two columns are liquid fuel, uh, heavy fuel oil and uh, marine diesel oil. Uh, for NOx, SOx, CO2, and particulate matters. You can see when went for LNG options, which is, uh, they are meeting these uh, IMO regulations. Uh, for CO2, IMO is talking about the CO2 emission control, particularly by 2050, uh, the CO2 emission level should be reduced 50% uh, compared with uh, the level of 2008. Okay. So LNG is not an option for CO2 emission 
uh, reduction because it only offers some 25% of uh, uh, emission reductions compared with uh, liquid fuel. Okay. Uh, for particulate matter, once you use LNG, it's uh, almost touch zero. So this is a summary of uh, using LNG as a uh, fuel. It offers 80% up to 80% of NOx reduction, more than 95% of uh, uh, SOx reduction, also 25% of CO2 emissions. Uh, there's no visibility, uh, visible smoke uh, when you use LNG. Uh, there's also no sludge deposit in the fuel tank fuel systems. Uh, those are the benefits for emissions uh, to the environment. Another good benefit is uh, LNG's price is uh, substantially low compared with uh, uh, this liquid fuel. Okay. Uh, here is a fuel price comparison. Uh, this uh, vertical axis is uh, US dollars in unit of heat released by LNG. Okay. So this blue color line, uh, let's see. This blue color line is this uh, LNG price in Japan. Okay, that's the top line. And another. Orange color, orange color is the uh, LNG price. Uh, it is uh, not. Yeah, this one is the LNG price in Europe. This red line is a uh, heavy fuel oil price. Okay, so red line is a heavy fuel price. You can see compared with the blue line or this orange line, LNG price is uh, uh, cheaper than this liquid fuel. Okay. Now, uh, to uh, for conventional shapes uh, or existing vessels to uh, burn this uh, LNG, you have to convert the engine first. Okay, so conventional diesel engine can be converted into a dual fuel engine where you can use uh, both LNG and diesel fuel at the same time. Nowadays, uh, these uh, two large engine manufacturers now, Vatsila and uh, Man. Here, w, uh, they both have a two-stroke and a four-stroke dual fuel engines, uh, you know, on the market. Take uh, Vatsila as an example. They have a uh, more than 180 shapes, you know. Now this uh, around the world being installed with their dual fuel engine. The total unit of delivery is uh, more than 500 units. So we have these uh, engines available for running these uh, LNGs. Shapes. Okay. It's very difficult to have uh, uh, this uh, exact number of shapes, you know, filled with LNG operating now. Uh, that's what I got uh, uh, so far. Uh, 63 in operation, 76 on all your books worldwide. Okay. Uh, by 2025, uh, uh, DMA's prediction is that there will be around 3,200 vessels using. Uh, you know, will be installed with uh, dual fuel engines. With a, uh, when we have uh, this uh, dual fuel engine or the shapes of, uh, installed with dual fuel engines, there has to be LNG available. Okay, so this is a uh, LNG pump fuel stations. By 2025, it was uh, predicted that there will be 139 uh, sea port and then uh, inland port uh, would be in Europe uh, would be ready for LNG pump okay. Here are some. Uh, it is development uh, that was uh, one and a half years ago. Uh, Chinese shipyards won the nine world largest container ships out there. Okay, that's uh, 22,000 TEUs containers. It's a uh, huge container. Uh, but those nine ships uh, would be installed with uh, uh, this dual fuel engine. And also, I've been working closely with this Kurdish uh, shipyard for their first. Uh, a dual fuel ferries, which was launched in November 2017, and then currently it's a sister ship uh, is uh, under construction now, will be delivered very uh, shortly. Okay. So engines and ships are available, and then these bunking options. Okay. You may have seen these uh, uh, pictures already from uh, internet. So there are basically there are three bunking options for LNG. One is the ships ships bunking. You can see these bunkers come to this. Uh, uh, shapes burn LNG and transfer this LNG fuel into the shape, then dash it away. Okay. So this is shape-to-shape -shape bunker option 
can be operated in port. It also can be operated when the main ship is in bump, uh, anchorage the area or on its void, where it has to be uh, re at, operating at a reduced speed. The second option is the tramp to shapes. This tramp already comes to shapes and then transfers this uh, uh, identity to the vessels, then that's the way. Third option is this uh, onshore storage, fixed storage tank, uh, transfer of this uh, shapes with uh, fixed piping systems here. Uh, both picture, this picture shows you this, uh, different options of uh, uh, bunkings, LNG. So track to shapes, shape to shapes, and then the sound show for the uh, bunking systems. However, this uh, bunking facility nowadays uh, around the world is very limited. Uh, I mentioned to you uh, this uh, ship yard that delivered a uh, few, few ferries uh, uh, two and a half years ago. However, this bunker facility in Glasgow or in West Scotland is not available now. That's still an issue. So this uh, green line shows this uh, uh, 2017 number of bunker station. Uh, this uh, has a lot bluish lines that shows uh, 2018, one year after this number. Uh, the first column is those are in operation now, and those Middle column is those that's been decided to be uh, constructed. Uh, those is uh, number is uh, under consideration. Okay, so we take this number exact as example. Uh, in 2017, there were 60 bunker stations, and one year after, uh, there were uh, 67 bunker stations. Okay. Uh, the next slide shows you where these 60 bunker stations uh, were uh, two years ago. Okay. You can say uh, they were most crowded in the Europe area. I've been keeping an eye on this uh, LNG banking facilities for a uh, number of years. Uh, there's one here. Yeah, this slide shows you by in 2013, there were only 20 banking stations uh, in operation. Okay, 2013 and then 2017, four years after, uh, the number increased to 60. And uh, a couple of years before 2013, there were only 12 bunker stations worldwide, okay? So the conclusion that uh, there's an urgent need for bunker stations. Uh, these bunker stations uh, uh, set up with uh, local government's uh, support. Okay? Uh, when you come to local government for this bunker station installation, uh, construction, constructions, uh, they always consider these uh, safety issues uh, and then economic issues. You have to invest a huge amount of money the question they ask is always, uh, where will I get my money back? How many shapes you know, uh, uh, will come to us for energy banking? And then when you come to ship operators, they all wish to have this, uh, uh, their ship be converted uh, into energy now to meet uh, uh, emission control regulations and also for this low price uh, of fuel. However, their question is that if I have ships, where, do I, where can I get this uh, energy bank, okay, supply? It's a chicken and egg situation now. Uh, to come to the uh, conclusions, okay, it has been predicted that uh, in the next eight years, every ten shapes you know uh, building, there will be one LNG shapes. Okay, ten percent of shape uh, will.